Have you ever had a day you wish could last just a little longer? Maybe your birthday, maybe an anniversary. Maybe you just curse at Earth for limiting you to 24 hours in a day. Well, you're in luck. The Earth rotates, and this means we have lots of time zones. I'm sure you've noticed this if you've ever gotten on a plane. Take a flight from New York to London, and you land seven hours later, but the clock will show a 12 hour difference. Your days are now only 19 hours. Take the flight back, and you'll get a 29 hour day. But what if we took this to the extreme? If we kept jumping on flights, what's the longest day we could experience? Just a basic ground rule, we'll only be looking at commercially available flights. If you had some serious dough, you could charter a private flight from UTC plus 14 all the way around the world, with a few stops for fuel and land in UTC plus 12, one day lasting 50 hours. And yeah, the International Datelines weirdness actually lets you get a single day longer than 48 hours. But we'll only be looking at regularly scheduled flights you can actually book a ticket on. If we want to shoot for a 48 plus hour day, we're going to have to start in UTC plus 14, this small sliver sticking out of the international dateline. There's only three islands in this time zone, Kiritimati, Napari, and Jarvis Island. The last one, like Jarvis from the Avengers, isn't made up of any real people, so it doesn't have an airport. Nepali has an airport, and by airport, I mean a dirt clearing, so this one's no good too. But luckily, Kiritimati has an actual international airport with flights to Fiji once a week, leaving right at midnight. It's almost like they knew we were trying to set a record. To keep track of all the time zone changes, the clock in the top left will show the time we've spent in one day. So leaving right at midnight, you take off and land 5 hours later at Nadi International Airport, landing at 2.40am. From there, you hang out on the beaches for a few hours before jumping on flight FJ1363 from Fiji to Singapore, departing at 6am and landing at 12.30pm local time. Then, a flight on Singapore Airlines gets you to London Heathrow by 7.15pm. Here's where we run into a problem. The sun just moves too fast. Fly into New York and you land at 10pm. Too late to catch another flight to the west coast of the US until the next morning. And try to fly directly to Los Angeles, San Francisco or Vancouver and you land after midnight the next day. This is just an unsolvable problem. Because most of Europe is 5 to 8 hours ahead of North America, but flying across the Atlantic takes 7 to 10 hours, Europe to America flights land only a few hours after they take off. And since most people want to land in the morning, this means most flights leave Europe in the morning. But since we started in small islands that don't offer a lot of flights, the layovers caused us to get to Europe too late in the day. So instead, how could we get to Europe directly and land in the morning so we can make our connecting flights to the US? New Zealand is in UTC plus 12, only 2 hours behind our original start, but they don't offer any direct flights to Europe, and flying with stops along the way takes us on the same route as before. Eastern Australia in UTC plus 10 runs into the same problem. Just like in our world's fastest circumnavigation video, Japan ends up being our saving grace, and not only offers direct flights to Europe, but flights starting only 10 minutes after midnight, perfect for getting an early start on the day. 10 minutes after midnight, you catch a seat on All Nippon Airways flight NH203, taking you from Tokyo to Frankfurt in 11 hours, landing just after 5am. From there, you have plenty of time to explore Germany's rich cultural heritage before your next flight at 10am. Actually, maybe don't leave the boarding area. At 10.35am, you board a flight for San Francisco, landing at 2.10pm. At this point, your day's already been 28 hours, but you still have two more flights to go. United Airlines Flight 1509 lands you in Hawaii at 9pm, where you have just enough time to jump on a 45 minute flight, landing you in the Midway Islands in UTC-11, just before 9pm. From there, you get to experience the last hours of your day on the parts of the beaches that weren't blown up in World War II. One day, 44 hours, and $2,767 in plane tickets. Of course, some people will say an even longer day would be hanging out on a boat on one side of the international dateline from midnight to 11.59.59 and in the last second of the day drift across the line to get another 24 hours, but to us that feels like cheating. There are some small modifications you can make to this route, like flying from Tokyo to Paris, London or Amsterdam instead of Frankfurt, and flying to Vancouver or Los Angeles instead of San Francisco, but this is the basic route. Well, I hope you like getting smarter with us today. If you liked the video, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. The algorithm seems to like it. And remember, there is always more to learn.